Hello, and welcome to a new episode of In the Eugenic Renaissance. In this episode, you will learn a lot about climate change. But first, let me ask you a question. What if I told you that entheogens not only can heal mental illnesses, but also can save our species from extinction? Would you think that I'm crazy? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. But I got a lot of science to prove it. So in this episode, I will be referring to scientific data to prove my point. So let's roll. But first of all, let's set the scene here. And I'm addressing all those people who believe that there is no global warming. <laughs> do you still believe it? Although, if you ask people, do you believe in global climate change? Typically, it is hard to argue with that, right? Because climate is changing, but overall, our species is going to be fucked in the long run. So, there is scientific data proving this, and of course, everybody is talking about the need to live sustainably and in line with nature. But of course, when you are at the first steps of the Maslow's pyramid, the hierarchy of needs, you're not interested about nature, you're interested in survival. So, you know, well, this is nice and good, but science is not that relevant. So before digging deeper into the topic, let me first of all give you an anecdote from a book by Robert Sapolsky called Determined, which I finally started to read earlier today in the morning. And I'm not going to be able to reproduce it by myself, that's why I'm going to read it to you. So William James was giving a lecture about the nature of life and the universe. Afterward, an old woman came up and said, Professor James, you have it all wrong. To which James asked, How so, madam? Things aren't at all like you said, she replied. The world is on the back of a gigantic turtle. Hmm, said James, amused. That may be so, but where does the turtle stand? On the back of another turtle, she answered. But madam, said James indulgently, where does the turtle, where does that turtle stand? To which an old woman responded triumphantly, It's no use, Professor James. It's turtles all the way down. So, I guess even though you may not believe in science progress, or it may not resonate with your internal logic, Still, facts are there, and I'm not going to talk to you about that particular book because I haven't made far, I read only a couple of dozens of pages earlier this morning, but at some point in time I will, if you want me to, put it in the comments and I'll make an episode about it because it's brilliant. Ready. So I'm not going to do a retrospective dive into the history of entheogens, I've done this before and you can see it in my previous episodes. But what you need to understand is that as of since middle of 20th century, entheogens have been studied from various angles. Of course, the first and most important angle was therapy. And just to remind you, they are being used to treat various types of mental and physical illnesses, such as anxiety, OCD, anorexia, PTSD, depression various types of dependencies and substance use disorder, as well as migraines, cluster headaches and physical pains. But I'm not going to talk about it. The reason I mentioned them in the first place is that there is a lot of studies proving that they show effectiveness versus placebo versus other drugs. But of course, it may be harmful for you if you recklessly decide to consume them, because in, in some jurisdictions, actually in the majority of countries, infusions are somewhat illegal. Although, in my view, it, it should be up to a person to decide what to do without one's own mind. But even though entheogens are extremely safe, they may cause harm and eventually lead to death. <laughs> Surprisingly, same sentence, right? But anyway, that's the reality of the pharmacon. It is both the remedy and the poison. Let's go back to science. So I've told you that the infusions have been studied in, from various directions. And when we're talking about proven data, there is a lot of information you, you can find out there, especially about the mechanisms and how infusions work inside one's mind. 
mainly they are targeting one particular receptor called 5-HT2AR, which is a serotonin receptor, but not all infusions target that particular one. You, you can also hear various types of phrases like default mod network and neuroplasticity and there is a lot of fancy words out there and of course I can elaborate on details and of course I can elaborate in details on each and every one of them but just to save time here I'm trying to focus on one particular direction but you can always put it in the comments and don't forget to like share and subscribe because I do need to spread the knowledge somehow right so when we're talking about the scientific publication and the medical trials, we're first of all looking at the efficacy of the substances in terms of healing various types of mental illnesses. But there are other things related to them, and if you remember the name Entheogen, this is something about the divinity within, right? <laughs> but you can double check the real meaning of it. Anyway, they are also a meaning enhancers and they cause a mystical experience which is hard to comprehend and sometimes to explain. But unless you've experienced it by yourself, it is really hard to say and to relate to it. Surprisingly enough, the revelations that people typically come up with when they have this entheogenic experience called their DA moments like Gomer Simpson, if you remember, ta. What are those da moments? Like, you know, I should exercise and eat healthy. I should take care of my relatives. I should spend more time with people I love. And, you know, quit smoking, quit drinking and stuff like that. Various types of epiphanies, but of course there are other things that are happening. And just to cite you some of the examples that I'm referring to, I'm going to give you a quote from a study that was published in 2017 by Met Yinor et al. And the quote goes as follows. Ego dissolution experienced during a participant's most intense psychedelic experience positively predicted liberal political views, openness and nature relatedness negatively predicting authoritarian political views, which actually makes sense, at least to me, because I've tried infusions many times and I can relate to that statement. So probably this is one of the reasons that entheogens won't ever be allowed and legal in countries with authoritarian regimes, because they crumble the system and people may eventually find out that the emperor wears no clothes. But anyway, that's not the point here. The point here is that there is a lot of scientific data explaining all the mental processes that are happening inside one's mind when somebody is facing infusions, mainly not them, but their internal processes, meaning subconscious level of their psyche. Because if you remember, in theogens, they dissolve ego, they demolish the structures and make you reach out and connect with your deeper levels of self. Not only that, surprisingly enough, or not, for those who've tried them, they know, they can relate. You can find information on the internet, you can find a lot of publications, and again, since beginning, since the middle of 20th century, there's been hundreds, actually thousands, thousands of medical studies and publications and different types of research that are dedicated to investigate the potential of application of entheogens in humans' life, not only in treating mental illnesses. And among those publications, you can find some really interesting gold nuggets, such as one particular study that's been published recently by two Swedish researchers, Marian Nilsson and Sanna Salhamar. I hope I pronounced it correctly, if not, please excuse me. It is a study that was published in the end of January 2024, and it's called Psychedelics and Inner Dimensions of Sustainability, a Literature Review. So the idea of that particular publication is to do a systematic analysis of all the publications dedicated to a topic of sustainability and psychedelics in one sentence or in one 
review or article or publication. So they did this and this particular publication that I referred to originally is simply brilliant because there is a lot of beautifully crafted statements taken from various types of studies. One of the studies is called From Egoism to Echoism. This is a particular one that I like uh, by, Car by Robert Carthard Harris et al. And it was published several years ago, namely in... Shit, I didn't write it down. Probably next time. Or, you know, you can always put it in the comments and I'll get back to you with the link. So the idea about that particular study and all of those that were reviewed in the article, in the publication, is to find whether or not psychedelic experience, or entheogenic experience actually, is affecting people and their perception of sustainability practices. So this is a thing that I want to connect here significantly. Um, as you probably know or don't, I studied at IMD, it is one of the top business schools in the world, on a program called Change Management. And during my education, I participated in a webinar, which was hosted by Dr. Goldsworthy. What a wonderful surname, right? So she's a professor, visiting professor at IMD, and that webinar was dedicated to psychedel... Oh, shit. <laughs> I wish. It was dedicated to sustainability practices from... The topic was called From Mindset to Mind Shift. And of course, the idea there was to make sure that people who are in charge of the companies and the leaders of tomorrow are in a proper mindset. But yeah, one thing you can call a mindset, but mind shift is required. And what is a mind shift? Is a change in thinking. And this is the exact thing that is happening with people who tried in theogens. So even though they are prohibited by laws and even though it is completely legal in some countries to even possess them, I would make a bold statement here and would advise to each and every CEO, provided that is safe, that it's legal and all the preparation and other harm reduction measures are taking in place, try an entheogen, a heroic dose of an entheogen, because there is scientific data saying that people who did this, they change their perception of not only reality, but relatedness to nature. Meaning, they're more sustainable in thinking, they're taking care of the nature, they want to spend more time in nature. And since we're all as humans tend to live in big cities, this is a way for us to distance ourselves from nature, unfortunately, even though we were born from it. So entheogens can help us regain that crucial and sacred connection with nature, at least mentally, because if a CEO of a big company would recognize and connect would recognize the need to take care of their nature and connect with entire human kind or with entire ecosystem on a psychological level such person wouldn't make stupid decisions and pollute mother earth right <laughs> at least in my hope and my thinking but again there is scientific data saying that this is how it works so you may not listen to me but you can read your own articles, you can read on your own all the publications that there are and make your own opinion. Because you may have your own logic, but it's hard to argue with facts, right? <laughs> and there's a lot of facts saying that this is going to work. So, I'm not going to continue my conversation here because I can tire you all with my talking. So I'm going to wrap up here and quickly summarize what I've mentioned during this particular episode. So I made a quick historical reference to psychedelic history and the research that's been conducted since middle of 20th century. I told you about a couple of studies that particularly outline how experience, personal experience, shapes one's own mind shift towards bigger connectedness with nature, sustainable thinking, and in general, sustainable practice. And I gave an advice for people who are planning to become a CEO. Ideally, go to the therapist, 
because even if you don't have any problems you still need to see a therapist but if you find a psychedelic assisted therapist i'd advise to go with that direction because enthusiasm can cause a mind and paradigm shift and help you not only treat your mental blocks or anxieties but also improve you as a personality don't forget they may cause harm to you if treated without proper responsibility don't forget the laws that are there to <laughs> protect the government not you but anyway if you have any comments don't forget to put them in the comment section or reach out in direct messages or not either of the platforms that are listed in my account but like share subscribe spread the knowledge and let's save mother earth <laughs> by the way going back to the original question here and for those of you who are still here cannabis can reverse engineer the climate change this is one of the only carbon negative plants and it can be used widely from pulp production all the way to construction materials I briefly mentioned in my previous episode but again I can talk more in details about it so indeed entheogens can save the world let's spread the knowledge and influence the policy makers but don't forget they need to be treated with caution because they're not 100% safe even though they're pretty much safe <laughs> see you in my next episode